facility on the Mert where we send blood with the Mert. In fact, I just need to get this call. Pathology wo 2 London speaking, sir. Yeah, I got the old vampire. We're dealing with it now. Cheers. Um, yeah, old vampire's been called. What happens is we send blood out with the Mert uh, in a little refrigerated container called the Golden Hour Box. Um, the blood in the Golden Hour Box has been used and a casual even is en route back to us. We can basically then generate another box with blood in it so that when the Mert comes in, we can switch it straight away and they get fresh blood because obviously we don't know when the Mert's going to get called out next. It could actually come in drop the casualty off and then go back out and obviously it needs a supply of blood. That's probably the Mert as we speak. This is a Golden Hour box. Inside the Golden Hour box, if you don't mind Steve, go ahead. we have what they call a shock pack. A shock pack's got two units of O negative blood, two units of AB plasma, those particular groups of plasma and blood are universal for both types so that you can give them to anyone. And what we do is we stick temperature monitoring with it to make sure it's okay. They also have all the labels on for transfusion purposes so we have full traceability. They will assess the casualty as they come off the, the airplane. But the good thing is they've got that blood there and then so if they do need to transfuse it, they transfuse it. If they don't need to, we have um, basically a 30 minute window for that blood to be able to come back to us. So all, all these shot packs are on a 30 minute, well, 25 minute timer. When that goes off at 25 minutes, we know we've got five minutes to either ascertain that that shot pack's been transfused or get it back to the lab so we can get it back into the bank. The people that use that are the uh, paramedics and the anaesthetists on the flight. We've got the capability of uh, taking blood forward to a patient in a box that's validated to hold a temperature. Uh, the problem with it is it's only small and it, it has to be small because it has to be man portable. You've got to be able to carry it around. C-spine trauma, right ankle, he's yeah. got ketamine on board as he's well. He's got ketamine but when it starts wearing off dog, yeah. he, he really wigged out so we gave him another uh, 40, make a total of 100. Okay. And you see this is what we got. Right. What's happened there is uh, the guys are taking what we call shock packs to ED. And they are similar to the Mert in that they are two units of Orneg, two units of AB plasma. He's just checking the paperwork to make sure that they're fine. And each of the boxes we take the samples off them so that if we have to cross match them we're, we've got the ability to cross match. Would you like a hand? I refuse. So that's off to the front of the house now. They've got 30 minutes to use that. Okay, let's go the other way. This is a golden hour box that's been in preparation. As you can see, it's frozen. Um, it takes about half an hour for us to condition this, or after it's been frozen, to recondition it so that, not minimise, guys, it's bad. So we have one constantly in the fridge, ready to go. There's one on the Mert. Hopefully, um, by the time that this is taken, this one will be good to go and it'll be in the fridge prepped. Okay. HM2 Hayden is basically getting a supply of American plasma out of the freezers. And what he's going to do is he's going to get them defrosted. The wind's coming out of it now. It's blowing, it's gonna get warm. So what we're gonna do is, uh, we're gonna obviously close the lid, but that's how it works. We have a temperature gauge up here so we can monitor how hot it's getting and we basically need this up to about between well needs to be up to about 32 33 degrees before we'll consider taking it out and at that stage you can have a look at it and check it for ice so that's good to go basically we've gone through the American shop packs because from what I've gathered we've got an amputee by that amputee and now there's no more American ones so that's why we're defrosting some more American FFP but they're going to have to wait 20 minutes if they want to stay with American. Otherwise, they need to make a decision to use British stuff. So it's going to be doctor's call. In the NHS, you will see uh, one part of a patient, i.e. You you'll be in chemistry, so you will do chemistry sample. Here, 
you see everything. So if a patient comes in, you'll, you'll do his clotting studies, you'll do his haemoglobin. If he has malarial testing, you'll do his malarial testing. If he needs biochemistry, you'll do his biochemistry and you'll do his transfusion. You do absolutely everything. So you see the entire patient picture. It's not as personal as well because you can just go across the way and see the patients and see how they're getting on. But back at home, you just have thousands of samples and it's just, it's not really personal at all. It's a lot more hands-on because you're actually having to deal with the machinery. You've got to be able to sit there and you've got to look at the results and you've got to decide whether they're right or wrong. You tend to get the feeling that you're more involved. You're all working together as a team. The knowledge of that, the camaraderie, you're doing a lot of good because Let's face it, the guys are coming in in a really bad way and you actually feel like you're doing a proper job. The job you're doing is saving lives, really. Whereas back at home, you don't really you don't see that that often.